Hi, CC families. This is Mrs. Shannon with Cycle 3, Week 10. We're going to start with English this week. So I have these books I made um, for my kids in my class. I have four and five-year-olds, so I like them to get some writing practice each week, and they really like it. So we're going to do the irregular verb tense to lie. And so I'm going to have them write it on this horizontal line here. I'm going to help them since they're little, um, but they're getting really good at it. And so I'm going to help them do that, give them a few minutes to do that. Some of them like to trace the other tenses with their pencil, so I'm going to let them do that as well. And then we're going to sing the song to the same tune that we've been using, if you're happy and you know it. So it goes like this. To lie, lie, lies, lay, lying, lame. To lie, lie, lies, lay, lying, lame. To lie, lie, lies, lay, lying, lean. To lie, lie, lies, lay, lying, lean. And then since it's lie again, I'm going to have them lie down and try to sit up really slowly as they sing it. So, to lie, lie, lies, lay, lying, lean. We did this last week too. Um, just kind of fun since it's to lie. And then I give them a little sticker because I've decorated each of their books with their name on it. And I give them a sticker each week after we've done it. So by um, the end of the year, they'll have 24 plus stickers on their books. So that is English this week. Um, <clears throat> next, we're going to do timeline. And I found these adorable little timeline cards. They're on the Classical Conversations website. I'll link below where you can find them. They have them for all the events, but I just printed out the ones that we're doing this week and um, <clears throat> I laminated them. So I made a set for each kid in my class. So I'm gonna give them to them and then have them spread them out on the table in front of them. And we're gonna work together to put them in order and kind of have them spread out in order on the table in front of them. Then I'm gonna give them these fun little light up sticks that if you hit something, they light up so fun. So um, I, I got this idea from Mrs. C. She's posted YouTube videos too, um, and a tutor. And she, I don't remember where she said she found them, but I found these at Joann Fabrics for really cheap. You could probably find maybe them on Amazon even. Um, I'll try to find, um, if Joanne Fabric still has them and link below if they do. <clears throat> but just a fun little cheap toy for them to play, make it more fun. So then what I'm going to have them do is we're going to sing the song together and they're going to tap each event in order on the table as we sing them. So after we do that a couple times, then I'm going to hand out an actual timeline card to each kid or one or two and then I'm gonna have seven pieces of painters tape on the wall like I've done previously and then have each kid go put one up in the right order then I'm gonna have them go stand under the timeline cards that are on the wall and we're gonna go over the motions together so <clears throat> for this week we're gonna start with Japan's hand period so I'm going to do um, my thumb and my first finger and by my belly kind of make the shape of Japan. So Japan's he and period. <clears throat> and then also go like this because it's like feudalism. So Japan's he and period. And then Charlemagne, so C for Charlemagne. Charlemagne crowned emperor of Europe. So I make this E for Emperor in, or Europe and go like this. <clears throat> so again, C for Charlemagne, crown emperor of Europe. Alfred, so A for Alfred, the great of England. Shake hands. Eric the Red, so just go down by lips like this. Eric the Red and Leif Erikson, like you're rocking a baby. Nor six floors, Valdemar the first of Kiev. So first of V, and then first of Kiev. Byzantine, so B, 
emperor, you can make your E and make a sash. Basil, the second. <clears throat> and then goes um, east-west schism of the church. So east-west schism of the church. So I'll do that one more time to kind of the tune. So Japan's he and period. Charlemagne, crown emperor of Europe. Alfred the Great of England, Eric the Red and Leif Erikson, Norse explorers, Valdemar the First of Kiev, Byzantine Emperor, Basil the Second, and then East West gives him up the church. So that is timeline this week. So um, after timeline, we're going to do geography. And so I have my baldy here that's going to help me with geography. And I have um, these trivium tables that I pre-outlined the states that we're going to do this week. I have these little erasers that I find different places like Dollar Store, Office Depot, my four and five year old class just loves them. So I'm trying to find ones for each week. And then they touch each state as we talk about them. So, um, Helena, Montana, Boise, Idaho, Olympia, Washington, Salem, Oregon, Juneau, Alaska. <clears throat> and this week, what I'm going to have them do is I'm going to have them write the initials of each state on them. And first I didn't say every week I've been having them trace the continental United States. So I'll have them do that again. It gets them a, gives them a really good idea of the shape of the US. And then I'm going to have them write the initials of each state in. And what's fun about that is then I can say, okay, does anybody remember what state has the MT in it? Oh, Helena, Montana. Or anybody remember the capital of the state that has um, ID in it. Oh, Boise, good job. And then I could say, okay, we're going to go around and we're going to erase each initial now. So now I want us to erase the one that's in Olympia, Washington. Okay, that's W-A. And so there's lots of things you can do with it. <clears throat> so I'm going to have them do that. We're going to sing the little tune. Um, so again, it goes like this. This is the classical conversation song. And Baldy's going to help me here. So I like to have him and I kind of fly around the room as we do this and like, you know, touch a kid's shoulder, tickle them on the cheek or something and they love it. So, um, Helena, Montana, Boise, Idaho, Olympia, Washington, Salem, Oregon, Juneau, Alaska. So that is what I'm going to do for geography this week. <clears throat> okay, next I'm going to do math, and we're learning about the squares. So this printable is from Kimberly. I'll link her below. She has ones for um, science and history, too, and she does the hymns that um, you can do with classical conversations each week, which I do at home with my kids really like. So um, <clears throat> we're going to do the squares. Sorry, the frog in my throat. I've had a cold. So let's, we're going to sing it to um, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, 196, 225. That's to the tune she'll be coming around the mountain. And for squares, I'm going to have painter's tape and put a big square on the floor. And then as we sing this, I'm going to have first the kids walk around the square as we sing. And then I'm going to have them kind of run slowly around it or skip. And I'm going to have them jump in and out of the square as we sing. Um, so kind of fun. You could have them like tiptoe inside and outside as they sing. So lots of things you can do with that. So that is what I'm going to do for math. For history, we are going to do silly words again. And so, because my kids love it. 
So first, I am going to say the history sentence the normal way and have them listen really carefully. So I tell them, gotta listen really carefully so you know what it is the right way. So it goes like this. Tell me about manifest destiny. President Polk believed that the Mexican War and the Gadsden purchased, Purchase in the mid-1800s affirmed Americans' manifest destiny to spread across the continent. And then I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna read it again, but you have to listen really carefully. And if you hear a silly word in there, raise your hand, let me know. <clears throat> so I'm gonna start with President Polka Dot. Polka Dot, no, what should it be? Oh, President Polk, oh, sorry, okay. President Polk believed that the grilled cheese Grilled cheese? No, it should be. Oh, sorry, Mexican War. Okay. So let me try again. President Polk believed that the Mexican War and the macaroni purchase. Macaroni? No, it should be. Gadsden purchase. Oh, okay. So you can see I go back and read it the right way every time until the new silly word. So um, they hear it the right way a lot. <clears throat> so then I did Santa's Manifest instead of America's Manifest. And I did um, Mermaid instead of Destiny. And then I did Cheese Stick instead of Continent. Obviously, you can do whatever you want. My kids absolutely love it. They say it's their favorite part. So I'm going to do that. I also am going to probably send this home with them, this Etsy coloring page. I have one for science, too. I'll link below where I find those. But um, I really like seeing those home or if we happen to have, you know, time at the end when we were reviewing, it'd be a good thing for them just to color and kind of chill while they listen to some review songs. So <clears throat> that is um, history. So for this week, I'm going to do the same thing I did last week. Um, we're going to sing the tune, song to the tune of Yankee Doodle. I made these little horses or little ponies, I should say, because Yankee Doodle um, rides on a pony. And so I just did a simple face cutout, um, felt, I cut out two of them so I could put the yarn in between and his little eye and then um, a paper towel holder. So um, again, I'm gonna start with last week and then this week and then next week all in one song. So it goes like this. Latin verbs have different endings called conjugations. Latin has no translation for articles. A and the Latin nouns and pronouns have different endings called declensions. These are Latin rules. And so I'm going to have them ride their ponies around, maybe just normally first, and then kind of rougher, and then really gently, and then um, really slowly. So that's what I'm going to do for Latin. And then for science, we are learning about the parts of the respiratory system. This printable is from Kimberly. Um, I'll link it below again. And then I have this coloring page from Etsy. I'll probably send home with the kids. <clears throat> so you could kind of point to where each thing is if you want. And um, we're gonna, as we sing the song, to the tune of supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. So, it goes like this. <clears throat> Try to do it with the hand motions too. Um, what are some parts of the respiratory system? Nose, pharynx, larynx, trachea, and bronchi. Bronchioles, alveoli, lungs help your breathing. These are some parts of the respiratory system. So I'll sing it one more time. What are some parts of the respiratory system? Nose, pharynx, larynx, trachea, and bronchi. Bronchioles, alveoli, lungs help your breathing. These are some parts of the respiratory system. I'm probably just gonna teach my kids the song because I, but you could kind of show them where everything is. So <clears throat> that is science this week. So for Tin Whistle this week, I have 
um, their little tin whistle beds that I gave them last week that they decorated. I'm gonna hand these back to them and remind them that their tin whistle, tin whistle stays on their bed um, until I signal them that we're gonna play by raising my hand up. So first, their tin whistle is gonna rest on their bed while we talk about a staff. And um, I'm gonna teach them a little song that goes like this to help them remember the staff. There is a staff that has four spaces. One, two, three, four. And on these spaces goes the, go the notes. One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Let's do it once more. One, two, three, and four. And then we can do the same thing with lines. So I have a staff that has five lines. One, two, three, four, five. And on these lines go the notes. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Let's do it one more time. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm <clears throat> gonna hand these out or give one of these to each of my kids so they can practice as we sing the song. So we're gonna go over the staff and then um, we're going, I'm gonna give them this. So I made these, I just kind of printed out, you know, a staff and um, taped them together. So there's four of them. So these are gonna be blank. I laminated them so they can draw on them with dry erase marker. Um, but we're gonna talk about um, a bar line and a measure. So I thought this would be a fun way to do that. So I'm going to have them first practice trying to draw a treble clef. And then I'm gonna have them practice trying to draw a whole note and talk about how that is four beats. And then, um, I'm going to have them try to draw a half note and then a quarter note and then an eighth note. So I'm going to help them try to draw those. And then I'm going to talk about a bar line. And so I'm going to have them draw a line like this. And um, then I'm going to have them draw the time signature. So four, four time and talk about how that means there's four beats in um, or every measure has four beats. So then I'm going to pass out the Yankee Doodle song and have them try to find the bar lines and the measures. And <clears throat> depending on how we're doing, I'll have them try to play just the first measure of the song. So that's kind of my plan. So again, my kids are really little, so even just like putting their fingers on the tin whistle um, and covering the holes is um, really hard for them. So I'll see kind of how far we get. But um, I also will probably review with them the tin whistle song that goes over the parts. Um, so it goes, do you know the tin whistle, the tin whistle, the tin whistle? Do you know the tin whistle? These are its parts, barrel. Fibble, mouthpiece, finger holes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Left hand on top. So <clears throat> my goal with them is that they would hopefully try to practice at home with their parents, getting their fingers on. And as we get into this, we'll try to practice again. I might just have them practice playing. Okay, let's play a whole note and hold it for four beats. Let's play a half note and hold it for two beats just so they can get used to blowing and actually covering the holes with their fingers. Um, so that is what I'm gonna do for tin whistle. And then for our presentation, we um, are gonna do my favorite day of the week is and why. And then I always encourage them to bring a prop if they want. And again, since these guys are really young, four and five year olds, it's a big deal for them to stand in front of the class so I encourage them to speak loudly so we all can hear them and to be respectful when their classmate is speaking and um, things like that. For review I have this little 
beach ball globe. I need to blow it up still. <clears throat> but I'm gonna have them, I'm gonna have us like in a circle and play um, a review song and have them kind of just bounce it up. And then when it falls to the ground, then I get to ask them a question related to that song. So if we were listening to a math song, I might be like, okay, um, who can sing some of the 13s for me? Let's review that. Like, or um, a history song, I might ask a question um, about something that was sung in that song. So I have playlists for each week. And so I'll probably just choose a couple of them and the playlists and um, just kind of have them play and have us listen to it as we're bouncing this ball around and then ask a review question. So that is review. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope these are helpful and I hope you have a great week. Thanks. Bye.